Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on these autumn acorn napkin rings where we're going to be working on a ring and then a little acorn to join and then all you just need to do is just roll your napkin and slide it through the ring and this makes a very good uh, interesting idea for Thanksgiving. So in today's tutorial you're going to need your Bernat Handy Crafter yarn or it could be Lily Sugar and Cream depending on where you live and what we're gonna be doing is that that's 100% cotton which is great for this kind of use because it is gonna be for table wear. You're going to need a three and a half millimeter size E crochet hook in order to play. The main colors that we're gonna be using today is uh, uh, Acorn Brown, Autumn Red and Squash and you're gonna need a little bit of polyfill stuffing to fill the acorn as you go. So it's gonna be a one piece unit that will always be a ring once we're done with it and you just have to slide in the napkin in order to make it work. So we're gonna work uh, sequentially today. We're gonna work on the napkin ring to the acorn to the acorn hat that you see there and then the leaf and then finishing off. So let's begin. So let's begin working on the ring itself. So you can use different colors depending if you wanna switch it up for your particular table and then you can just uh, make as many that you need for your table setting. So we're going to begin by chaining 26. So we're gonna create a slip knot first and insert your hook in and you are going to just chain 26. So let's do that. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and then keep on going until you get to 26 and then I'll see you back here in just a moment. So without twisting your particular strand, so you have 26 on here, just put the first part of the strand on making sure it's not twisted at all and just feed it on through and we're gonna just do a slip stitch in order to form the ring just like you see here. So the size of your yarn and everything. So you're gonna notice it's kinda big. It will condense down on you once you get going. So then what we're gonna do then is that we're going to continue and we're going to chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet in each of the chains going all the way around. I'm going to show you how not to have a sti uh, slip stitch line. So if you want to have that then I will show you that when we get back. So just continue to go around the chain just one single crochet in each. So when you get all the way back around you have two choices. You can either just slip stitch to the beginning one and then start the next round by chaining one and doing one single crochet into each or what I would do because I don't like slip stitching marks. So what I would do is that when you go to start just continue to single crochet in a continuous circle all the way around and your goal is is that you're going to continue to circle around until you get to um, what is it there one and three quarter a width. So all you're just gonna do is when you get all the way around make sure that it's not twisted in any weird way and you're just gonna continue to single crochet in a continuous circle until the distance is one and three quarters inch thick. So when I come back I'll get that done for you and then we're gonna continue then moving along to making the rest of the napkin holder with you here on camera. So I'm coming up all the way around and I've got my inch and three quarters and you can see that there's no slip stitching that happened in this project at all because I just went in a continuous circle. You can see this is where I started down here. So I'm just going to then to bring it back in balance is that I'm gonna slip stitch the next two twice. Sorry to the next two stitches just slip stitch and then fasten off. So then once you fasten off then you're just gonna hide in your loose ends from this point using a darning needle. So what I'd recommend is get a nice sharp darning needle here for you and you wanna do this with both sides of it every time you're doing one of these rings and just feed the yarn through and onto your needle and then just glide it up underneath the stitch work. I would stay towards the back side of it to the side that will be touching the napkin come out the back side and just turn it around once you do that just to see it easier and then just stay on this side of it. And if you go back and forth a total of three times you can lose your, your loose end and get it stuck right underneath the stitches. So I want you to do that with both sides of your, your napkin ring because you'll have the starting strand as well. So do that with both sides so no matter which way you turn it the way that I did it there's no slip stitching lines at all. So continue now get this uh, hidden and then we're gonna carry on with starting to make the acorn. So let's begin working on the acorn together. So we're going to use a different color and it could be autumn red if you wish and we're just gonna do a slip knot and we're going to insert it onto the hook. So I want you to chain a total of 15 and then do a slip stitch to form a ring. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 and 15. Once you get that done then just without this being twisted all up just insert it into the beginning chain like so and then just uh, pull through and through to form the final ring. Just like that. Okay so let's begin to do round number one. So let's begin to do round number one. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna chain one and we're gonna do one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around in a circle. Now what I want you to do is that I want you to grab a spare piece of string just like this and I want you to keep it to the side because when we come back I'm gonna show you what to do so we'll avoid the slip stitch again but of course if you don't mind the slip stitching you can carry on as you know it. So just uh, continue to single crochet in each stitch going all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round for round number one. When you come all the way around you can either slip stitch to the beginning a single crochet and just join it with the slip stitch and then you have your solid round then every time you go to start you want to do that chain one and then continue along with the instructions. Or what you can do is that you can do a typical amigurumi and grab the spare piece of strand and in the stitch before you joined it I want you to just slide the hook into the top of the stitch and drag this color through. So it's, it can be any color, it doesn't matter. This is just spare str uh, string. So you know that every time you come back to the spot you know that you've gone in a continuous circle. So what you can just do now is that you can start the next set of instructions without having to do any slip stitching and you'll have the perfect acorn. So it says working in the back loops only one single crochet in each stitch. So if you notice that with crochet if you're new you'll notice that there's always two strands that make up a stitch. If you go in the first strand that's the front loop and if you dive over the first one and just go into the last one the back one that's the back loop. So in the back loop only all the way around I want you just to put in one single crochet. So when you get back to this one that's marked you know that you've gone all the way around. So in this round just go one single crochet in the back loop and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming all the way around and this is the last one I can tell with the stitch marker and once I get back there I can move that stitch marker up. So just move it up and drag it through that underside of that stitch and therefore I'll know where that is when I come back around again. So you can do the slip stitching and chain one effect if you want to. So rounds three and four are both the same so go into the both loops like once again the regular stitch and do one single crochet in each going all the way around. So please do this same thing for rounds number three and four. So you'll pass the stitch marker, you'll move the stitch marker up and continue one more time. So do three and four just one single crochet in both loops going all the way around. I'll see you at the end of this uh, round number four. So now that rows three and four are just done one single crochet in each of the stitches. I moved up the stitch marker and now I'm ready for number five. So we're gonna continue. Skip that chain one if you're doing it the way I'm doing it but if you're doing the slip stitching technique chain one first. The first two are going to be come together so single crochet two together so just going into the next stitch pull through and then going into the next stitch so just go and advance one more stitch pull through. You have three loops in the hook pull through all three. So that's two together and then the next three are just going to be one single crochet each. So one, two and three. Okay so then a single crochet two together again and then the next three are by themselves. And you continue in that same fashion until you get all the way around. So we're gonna do it again because we're not all the way around yet so put the two together and then the final three will just be one single crochet each. So there's no special counting. It works out mathematically in order to have that nice balance of bringing everything back together. So we're continuing along now. We're going to then just move up the stitch marker once again and then move on to round number six. So in round number six we're just gonna continue around. Each stitch is gonna be one single crochet. It's just gonna take us a matter of a few seconds to get all the way around. So just one single crochet in each. This gives it time to relax and form the shape of the acorn without forcing it too quickly because uh, then it will turn into a cone if you force it too fast. So round number six is just one single crochet in each until you get all the way back around.
and then the last one here you're in move up that stitch marker and we're gonna advance then to round number seven. Round number seven we're going to do um, we're almost done we just got two rounds to go. So round number seven is just single crochet two together six times. So just uh, put the two together and then keep doing that all the way around. So just put the next one and the one after that together. So even if you're off by a stitch sometimes like this kind of idea you can really kind of fake it if you have to. I'm not off but if you were there's always a way to fake it. So you just did it right to the last one as you can see and then I'm moving up the stitch marker one last time because we only have one more round to go after this. So round number eight let's take a quick peek says single crochet two together three times and then we're gonna slip stitch to the first and then finish off. So we're only gonna do it three times so you're only gonna do the first two. So you're creating that final point put those together and then the next two gonna get really kind of tight in there which is fine and then the final two are gonna come together. So that's it. So if you're doing my method of the way you're gonna do it all you're just gonna do is just kind of make it look good when you get all the way to the point. So just kind of open it up with your hands if you have to just to spread those stitches out. I would get rid of the stitch marker so it's out of your face and you can do the final two together. That last one is really kind of tricky. So you're gonna do that and then that's it. So all you're just gonna do then is just cut your yarn and then using a darning needle you are going to get rid of this loose end. So just pull it through and you're going to put this onto a darning needle. So the goal is is then to pull it to the inside of your acorn. So just go straight into the project and what I would do for me are you I always turn this thing inside out so you can access everything so just pull on it and then I'll just pull it like this and therefore you can see the inside of your acorn and what I would do is just put it back onto your needle here and then feed it through your work three times. So because this is the inside of the work I would stay just to the inside of the strands. Don't go to anything crazy on the on the outside so you don't impede the look of it. Just like that. So this is really gonna have no friction to you. If you go back and forth three times you can really securely do it. I've just only done two there but then see once you fold it the other way this is what it looks like. So it's only partially the way done now. We have to provide the acorn hat which is next. So let's begin to do that next. So let's get ready and we're now going to do the acorn hat. So in round number two we had to do the back loops only and this creates a line that you see right here. See this line? That there is round number two. So you can go to any one of those. It uh, doesn't matter which one you go to. Uh, just slide it in behind one of those and just form a slip knot with your acorn color and then just pull through that loop just like there. So now you're going to begin to go all the way around and we're gonna do the same principle so grab your spare piece of yarn as well. So but we have to get started first and we're going to chain one and we're gonna put two single crochets in the first one we just did the join with. So one and two. So we have to make the hat a little bit bigger than the actual acorn to get it to sit down properly. So the next two are just gonna be one single crochet each and the next one after that I'm gonna release that yarn now. The next one is gonna be two into this next one. So one and two. So what I want you to do in this particular round is that the next two are by themselves. So one and two and then the next one has two into the same one. So please do that same pattern going all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round and we'll advance from that particular point. When you get all the way around you can either slip stitch to the beginning one if you if you would want the slip stitching line. If you don't just insert that spare piece of yarn in the last stitch that you just did and then don't do the slip stitch and just do continuous rounds 
as what I'm about to show you. I'm uh, really a stickler on these uh, slip stitching lines especially on small stuff like this. So what we have is that we're going to continue round two and we're just gonna do one single crochet in each. So if you're doing it my method just to go to the first one just right on top and just single crochet and then keep on single crocheting in each stitch going all the way around and when you get back to that stitch marker just mark it, move it up and then we'll continue along for there. So round number two, one single crochet in each stitch going all the way around. So I'm continuing all the way around. This is the last stitch I can tell by the, the stitch marker and I'm gonna move the stitch marker up. So I notice the pattern doesn't say to add uh, any kind of stuffing into the interior of this. I would recommend that you do that. It'll keep it nice and full every time you wanna use it. So let's uh, continue along. Round number three is that we're gonna single crochet two together. So just continuing the next two is put it together and we just continue to do that all the way around. But if everything gets really tight at the top what I want you to do is that we're gonna start putting in some stuffing uh, very shortly in order to get it in there before it gets too small for us to do so. So you're gonna single crochet two together all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. I did put some stuffing on the interior of this now because it's gonna get too tight for me to do so and I'm gonna move up my stitch marker once again and then move up to the next round. So in doing so when the way I did it here is that you end up with a step here but when you go to fasten it onto your particular project you wanna fasten it so it's, it's down and out of the way. So let's uh, continue along. We're going to then move on to round number four. We're gonna single crochet two together the next two and you're gonna continue to do two together all the way around once again and make sure you get that stuffing in at this point because it's gonna get impossible to get it in after this point as well. So just continue to put two together all the way around for round number four. It's gonna get really tight on you. So just take your time when you go to do this. And then that's it. So what uh, finish that stitch and then what I want to do is that I want to move up that stitch marker but I think this is round number um, four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that stitch marker right out because it's gonna be very easy to tell. You only have just a, a little bit to do and what we're going to do then is that we're gonna do the final and fifth round which is the fifth round and it's gonna be two together and you do that a total of, of twice as you go all the way around just like you see. So you're thinking to yourself well that doesn't look too acornish. So once you get this done you're just gonna trim this but trim this a little bit extra long for yourself and then just pull it through that loop. But watch what I'm about to do. So you're noticing it doesn't really look like an acorn at this particular pot spot. So what you have to just do is that you kind of have to come make it come down. So in order to do that you just gotta be very careful about this. But when I say careful it's not like rocket science but um, you're gonna put it through there and you're just gonna dive directly through the middle and you're going to peek out just the bottom. Just peek out. It's just enough to grab a, a strand. And when doing so, see what happens? It pulls that center down and then you're gonna come back in that just right directly beside it, beside some fibers and come back out through the top. And before you do that, you don't want the bottom to be squashed. So you want to just kind of shape it before you do it and make sure when you pull on it, the top is going down but not the, the base. Okay, so once you get it nicely shaped then you're just going to weave your tail in three times. If you overstuff your acorn then this particular spot would look like a, a minion really. It would be like a little pill. Okay, so you're gonna just trim that right now and then because I did it the way I did it you just have to shape it and then it looks like just kind of just make those edges. Again it's all about shaping right? 
and there is your little acorn. So here's where I did the, um, I bypassed that. So what I want to do is any kind of stuffing that's kind of coming out, just kind of pull on it, get it out of the way. And then when I go to fasten this down to the particular thing, I want to make sure that it's gonna be facing down. So this section here will face down to this particular project. And what you could do too is you can do it so that it's hiding this particular um, stitch marker to, or this um, continuous that we did. So you can do it in a way that it kind of covers that and so no matter how it's turned you'll never see any slip stitching or anything like that if you wanted to do it that way as well. So we still have a leaf to do and let's begin to do that next. So we now have a leaf to do. So we're gonna use the brown again and we want to chain a total of 16 to begin. So let's do that. So we're gonna do 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and go all the way to 16 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. Okay now that my chain 16 is done this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna go a double crochet third chain from the hook. So count it back from there. So 1, 2, 3 and we are going to do a double crochet. I know it's brown it's hard to see but that's what the yarn is calling for. So we're gonna do a double crochet third chain from the hook. Now it says to chain 2. Okay slip stitch uh, and into the next stitch. So slip stitch in, so slip and then it says to chain two and one double crochet into the same one. Don't worry, we'll repeat that again. So what we're going to do is that we're going to then continue along. So we're going to chain two, we're going to slip stitch into the next one, chain two, and then double crochet into the same one. And this is gonna cause it to go into these nice little circles. So we, remember, chain two, slip stitch into the next chain. So you're gonna do this all the way down your chain. Then you chain two and double crochet into the next one. Okay, so chain two, slip stitch into the next chain chain two and double crochet. So continue to do that all the way down your chain and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So you're gonna do that all the way down. So chain two and then you're going to just go into the last one. Chain two, double crochet and then chain two and that's it. So leave an extra long tail here because we want to use that to be able to fast, fasten everything together. So leave it a little bit longer than normal and then just feed it on through. So now what we're going to do is so we're going to attach everything together and you can use the, the picture and the model to be able to position everything as well. We'll go through a little bit of tips with that as well. So let's uh, get rid of some loose ends. Keep this long one here but let's get rid of this one first. So using your darning needle I want you just to weave it in and out total three times into your existing project. You don't want it to alter any kind of um, tension at all. So just loosely just kind of hiding it in just dragging it through some of the chain work. A good strong needle with um, and a good sharp needle with cotton works extremely well and you go back and forth three times. Then you can safely cut that down. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to affix this leaf concoction here and we're going to affix everything together so that it looks like it all belongs together. So let's to do that first. So let's put everything together. We're just gonna put our long tail from the leaf and we want to go through the center of your acorn and just drag it on through. And then just go around again. It's like a whip stitch. So just go right up and over to get that into position another time. So it's nice and secure. So then what you're gonna do is take that and you're now going to affix it to your, your ring. So you go about halfway down as per the picture and you're gonna go through but not the entire ring. You just want to go into the one side only and then back out. So leaving that ring open and when you come back through make sure you go through the top of this acorn once again. So what I would do if it were me is that I would go through 
this a few times. So going back through the top of the acorn once again, back to the ring, but I would go in a different position in the ring to move it down and then back out. So we know that this is gonna fold towards the side of the project. So I'm working my way down the side of the acorn here so it'll force it to lay down when you go to use it and then back through the acorn again and back through the ring. And then back out again. Again just staying, in, just staying into the brown so that you don't ever see it and then back out to the ring. See? So then there you got everything nice and attached. So what I would do because this is brown I would come back out of the ring and through the acorn once again and but because this is brown I would feed my yarn in and out of the brown section a total of three times. So one, two and three. And then what I would just do is trim it right down because you've gone in, in and out three times and then what you wanna just do is now shape everything and have your uh, self a very nice Thanksgiving. So this would be how to do a Thanksgiving uh, ornamental acorn and this is a really cool idea and it's just really quite simple and it's something to add to your table decor. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.